That's really great. You have magic hands. There's only one thing I like better than applause, and that's sincere applause. Oh. I keep that sign. How are you tonight? Okay, I have a question for you. Which would you rather have, the monologue or stovetop stuffing? <laughs> stovetop stuffing, <laughs> eh? eh. Darn it. This is the, uh, this is the Tonight Show, the star-studded show of commercials and uh, whatever else we can scrape up in between. <laughs> uh, All right, Doctor. All right, Chief, I do. You know it's raining out again? Yeah. Raining real heavy. You may have to stay here overnight. <laughs> and the band will supply their usual overnight kit for you. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we welcome you to Holly. How many of you are out here um, vacationing in California? <laughs> Hollywood, wherever Hollywood really is, uh, it's kind of a community unto itself. Uh, for example, if you follow the news lately, you know that Vietnam has invaded Cambodia, right? China has invaded Vietnam. Russia says they may invade China. PLO has got the Israeli embassy in Iran. And the headline in the LA Times is Lee Marvin's girlfriend called secret witness. <laughs> Gets things in perspective out here. Um, I was not here yesterday to celebrate Washington's birthday with you. Oh, yeah. And every time... Every time I think of Washington's birthday, I go back to my youth, my school days in Nebraska, when we had... Is that right? Are you from Nebraska? Oh, the dog gone. Yeah, my folks still live in Columbus, Nebraska. Fremont. My folks live in Fremont, too. See how you can endear yourself no matter what they say. My parents live there, and they go, oh, wonderful, huh? But I think back to uh, my school days there when we did the annual Washington's birthday pageant, and my first, first real crush, little girl then, and her name was Becky Easy. Remember her? <laughs> Becky Easy. <laughs> Becky was, well, yes. Uh, she was always named uh, Miss Washington each year, and she got that title because... Uh, she was always giving uh, her address to the troops. And so they entitled her. Ah, uh, you're right. You know, there's so much history written about the first president, George Washington. We know all about him, but not many people realize, and historical scholars have just uncovered that. The fact, today, as a matter of fact, they uncovered it. <laughs> just in time for this monologue. That George had a brother, Billy Washington. That's right. And Billy was the man who held up his rifle at Valley Forge and told the British to kiss his butt. I don't know how to remember that or not. Well, there's some good news and some bad news today. Yeah. The bad news is that the nation's capital has been brought to a standstill because of a snowstorm. The good news is that the nation's capital has been brought to a standstill because of a nation's snowstorm. <laughs> you can't get hurt if nothing's going on back there. They had two feet of snow in a Washington, D.C. And did you see President, the picture of President Carter? His face? He had a few bruises and contusions. He, he bloodied his face during a fall during a cross-country skiing trip. Luckily, the president got first aid immediately because I had plenty of, plenty of bandages left over from the Ford administration. <laughs> and they just, uh... <laughs> president Carter today made a major foreign policy address on national television. How many of you watched the president's speech? No, is, is there one person who watched it? No. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you are obviously were watching reruns of the match game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think the president in trouble. He's not only got a domestic foreign crisis, he's got a domestic crisis. Nobody's listening. <laughs> it was a major crisis. Not a major, but a major address today. Nobody saw it? <laughs> How many of you know about the Academy Award nominations? 
That puts it in perspective. Uh, Heaven Can Wait won eight Academy Award nominations. Now, that's the uh, picture that Warren Beatty, I guess, directed, produced, starred in, uh, helped write. And um, Beatty plays a man who, who dies and then and comes back. No, I die and come back two or three times a week. <laughs> and got no Academy Award nominations whatsoever. Well, let's see. Uh, the Deer Hunter, that picture, uh, got, what, eight nominations? Heaven Can Wait got about nine. Unmarried Woman was in there also. And I think all of them would be happy to give those nominations up for just a piece of the action of Animal House, as far as the money goes. Warren Beatty, who else? Robert De Niro? John Voight? Lawrence Olivier and Gary Busey for the uh, Buddy Holly story. Uh, Lee Marvin did not make a picture uh, this year, but he was starring in Animal House and an unmarried woman in real life. So he may be up uh, for an honorary Oscar. No. Woody Allen was nominated as Best Director again. But Woody is very shy, you know, and does not, does not attend these things. So like last year, uh, he will be playing clarinet in a nightclub in New York surrounded by newsmen from the three major networks. <laughs> or he won't be. <laughs> Been watching Roots 2? Root, well, Roots 2, as you know, uh, didn't get as big a ratings, I guess, as the first Roots. But it is the period, the post-slavery period, of uh, Quinta Quinte's family, and it contains their life following the uh, Reconstruction period after the Civil War. Uh, through the persecution of the Ku Klux Klan, Klan, right up to their struggle to vote, right up to modern times, to the present, where Vida Blue escaped from his white owner, Charlie O. Finley. <laughs> it's a whole story. And next year, this is a really big success, they're coming out with another sequel, Roots 3. It's set in the future. Um, this is the story of African astronauts who blast off to Mars in search of extraterrestrial soul food, which could be another biggie. <laughs> anyway, tonight we have Mr. Buddy Hackett, Sally Field is here, new comedian Tony Delia, and if you saw the Grammy Awards, one of the highlights was this gentleman who got up, 96-year-old Yubi Blake is with us tonight. He is a delight. So thanks for coming. We'll be right back. It is time now to welcome that illustrious visitor from the East, the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-omniscient, famous seer, sage, soothsayer, and former self-defense instructor to Dwayne Bobbick, <laughs> Karnak the Magnificent. Oh, great one. Welcome, welcome, a thousand welcomes to you and your presence. So nice to see you again. I hold, I hold in my hands the envelopes. A child of floor can plainly see these envelopes are hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funkin' Waggles Port since noon today. No one knows the contents of these envelopes. But you, in your mystical and borderline divine way, will ascertain the answers, have never before seen the questions. Hmm? Oh, yes, Karnak will do that. Are you ready now? Silence, please. A mystic soothsaying. Question is in this envelope. Hermetically sealed. I will give you the answer before I look. That's right. At the question. That's the bit. <laughs> the answer to the sealed question. Yes, hermetically sealed. I know that. I have not seen them. No. Been in a mayonnaise jar. will do this. <laughs> Funk and Wagnall's push. The answer is Passover. Passover. <laughs> what will American Jews do next time the Carter name is on an election ballot? <laughs> Freezing and frigid. Freezing and frigid. 
Describe the East Coast today and your wife last night. (laughs) 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 Super train. Super train. What will the NBC programmers use to get out of town after the season? <laughs> From here to eternity. From here to eternity. How long does it take f- to pay for a new house? Crazed piano player, tune your sister. <laughs> Supporters of the Shaw. <laughs> what did they confiscate inside the Shaw's gym locker? Hot cross buns. <laughs> <laughs> Audience rushing ahead mm. of God. What do you get when you squat on a hot cross? <laughs> when George Washington chopped down the cherry tree. When was the last time a politician told the truth? <laughs> trying to peek. (laughs) Fantasy Island. Fantasy Island. (laughs) Where does Michelle Triola Marvin have the best chance to resume her singing career? (laughs) Ichabod Crane. What do you use to lift up your Ichabod? (laughs) Restless. Ayatollah Khomeini. Describe the sound made by Bella Abzug's husband when he saw her on their wedding night. (laughs) Ayatollah Khomeini. in my hand the last envelope. May the state highway commissioner declare your stretch marks a freeway. (laughs) Wet back. Wet back. What do you get if you turn your back on Billy Carter? Pause for this brief intermission. We'll be right back, so stay where you are. We got a good show for you tonight with Sally Field, new comedian Tony Delia, UB Blake is with us, and this gentleman. When you when you talk about funny people in this world, I can't think of anybody who has made me laugh any more than Buddy Hackett. He's an original, and uh, he thinks funny. He kind of looks funny. He sounds funny. (laughs) Well, I mean, he looks like a comedian should look. And he is one of the truly funny men in the world. Would you welcome Mr. Buddy Hackett? (laughs) All right. I don't know if you could hear back of the curtain what I was saying. And they took it like I was... When I said... 
You look funny. You have a comedic look about you. Sure. That's all I meant, not to show Cary Grant wishes he had that. <laughs> Cary's always wanted to look like you right. in light comedy. And I'd like to look like he looks whenever he's through with it. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. When, oh, you, sure. when you walk out on a stage, and I'll bet you this way, when you were a kid, you got a, a twinkle in the eye. You, yeah. Physically, you have a f an amusing looking face. I'm a homely son of a No, gun. you're not. I didn't I'm mean that. I'm a funny way. looking dummy. No, you're funny looking. Yeah, That's but I, I mean. like to be funny looking. I don't want to yeah. look like you and Ed. Good looking, <laughs> handsome. A uh, waspish looking guy? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayonnaise. I, I, I would, that's right. I, how would I look in my family? <laughs> weird, weird. My mother would say to me, kick us right the looks, me kinder snit, I feel if I stand if I. Yes. You'd ruin the whole hacker family, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, right, it would be awful. <laughs> you know, you talk about mayonnaise. One time I was skiing up in uh, Sun Valley, Idaho, and uh, I had been there for the first time, so they didn't know my behavior pattern too good, and they really treated me like a big shot. And they gave me the Avro Harriman Cottage. Oh. Oh, very. And who was, had it before me was the Kennedys, and one sister-in-law left a note for the other sister. See, they always have one locked up closet where whoever lives there permanently keeps their stuff. I noticed that in, in the Las Vegas in the Sahara house. Oh, yeah. There's a locked closet there, yeah, right? Yeah, that's my closet. Yeah, I always want to peek in there, and I can't get in. <laughs> Joanna has the key. Let really? Her, I yeah. wouldn't do that. You know what's in there? More notes. I don't want to know. I envision all kinds of uh, At devices night, in do there. Do you ever hear this at night? Like this. Do you ever hear? <laughs> from the, uh, you mean from the house? No, do you just hear it? Because if you do, it's not coming out of that closet. Huh? <laughs> just wondered if you hear that, because it's... It's good to check with a doctor if you yeah. hear that too often. <laughs> it's called having a clock head. Yes, having a clock Hey, I yeah. interrupted your thought. Anyway, they leave a note. There's one locked closet, yeah. Yeah, so, well, me and Walt, you know, the stage manager sure. from Sahara, Jagodinsky? Yeah. And Sandy, we're up there, and we decide we want to see what's in that closet. So I open it up, and there's a note from one of the Kennedys to the other one saying, Dear Ethel, I... Uh, we had a few things left, and we left it for you. So there was a bottle of cocoa and some other junk, you know, a can of soup and a few little things. And I thought, that's embarrassing for one Kennedy to leave another. That ain't very much. can of cocoa and soup. Yeah. So I bought 24 bottles of mayonnaise and just put them in there. <laughs> and... so... Peanut butter, mayonnaise, you know. Yeah. And then, then as we stayed a few days, I started thinking maybe it wasn't good enough. And then I bought some more cans of soup and a few other couple of white breads. And but the last thing I went overboard. Yeah. A carp. I hung a carp. A real. That's real gentile. A carp. And they didn't come up for another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept hearing. Buck, 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 buck. Hey, speaking of locked closets. Yeah. Are you a curious guy? Now I've admitted this on the air. Terrible. I've admitted this on the air. People have gone. Oh, how terrible. I have been known, when I go to a party at somebody's house, you go into the bathroom to use the john, to take a peek in the medicine cabinet. I don't know why. I'm not looking to steal anything. George Kaufman used to admit that he was terrible at this. He would go to people's house, and if, they were, if stuff was on the desk, he would go over and, and actually look at... He was just a curious guy. You know, you can always find a lot about people if you take a peek in the medicine chest, you know, just to see... What a swell idea. You, now, you've never done that? Oh, sure I've done okay. that. Are you kidding? But I don't have to be there at a party. I could just be passing a house with a door open. And just go in. And... Yeah. I think that's going breaking and entering. I'm not talking about that. I'm only looking. <laughs> hey, Bray, you got to catch you taking something. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but it hurts your neck to do that. Yeah? Yeah, because you're doing this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about tonight? Well, I, you covered everything in a monologue that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. The bruise on the president's forehead, you know. I which, guess that was from skiing. Yeah, well, I've been skiing for 30 years, and you really can't make much time using your head to ski with it. <laughs> I mean... That cuts down. Yeah. I imagine... What was the story? Did you hear what happened? Did they hit a, did they hit a little rock or oh, something? Oh, who knows? He probably was sliding along on his head, and no one wanted to tell him that you got to use the other hand. When you're president, it's, you know, it's tough. And maybe he was just trying to take the shine off his teeth. 
<laughs> so, uh, he was going cross country. I, I you skied. ever do cross country? No, I do. That's, that's really that's laborious, very, isn't it? I mean, that's... It's hard work, and it takes a great deal of technique. Uh, I'm a downhill skier, and it's... Uh, you see, I well, learned I wouldn't think you'd be an uphill skier. I mean... <laughs> But how else would you go says down? I have a funny face, and now he <laughs> refers that I wouldn't ski uphill. Well, when you say what down... do you want me to do? <laughs> go up to the end. <laughs> Went right to the A material. No, huh? I... Now listen to me. What do you mean downhill? Well, of course you'd go downhill. You never hear of an uphill skier. That's all I meant. No. Well, you say downhill skier, there's cross country, and there's downhill, and there's what? Slalom? Is that what you're saying? No, slalom is all part of downhill. Slalom means they have a trail marked with poles, and you've got to turn in and out of them. But isn't that kind of uh, redundant? Downhill? No, that's what it's called. I don't redund them at all. I don't care. <laughs> just... What's redundant? What is he swinging out at me for? Now you got me for stupid, too, no. right? <laughs> a funny looking fat guy that can't go uphill, and who's stupid? Well. <laughs> My mother right now is glad she's dead. <laughs> if she were alive today, she'd be a very sick woman. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll do this and be right back. <laughs> we're talking with Buddy Hackett. We have Sally Field with us, Tony Delia, and Yubi Blake a little later. Now, downhill skiing is different than slalom, obviously, but no, you still no, go downhill. slalom is part of... Yeah, but that's where you go through the, uh, the gates. Yeah, well, in other words, the slalom is a marked course. Right. And downhill, you get down the best you can. I see. Yeah. You know, the, there's a little hill outside of Las Vegas called uh, Lee Canyon. Mm hmm And they have only one lift. Well, they have one big lift, uh, one chair lift, and a platter, and a rope tow. But no one ever takes lessons there. So they don't know how to stop the people. And they always want to... They stop by going into something soft. And I must have stopped 30, 40 people a day. <laughs> I mean, I got wax up and down my back and everything. <laughs> Ski wax and I hear, you're a, I hear you're a good skier. Yeah, I'm a pretty good skier, John. My teacher is here tonight. Yeah. You know, Louis Dorfman, the guy I always tell about who lives with the animals and... Oh, yeah, and, uh, a lion or that, a tiger or something? He's got a lion. Now, since I made him famous on this show by telling about him living with a mountain lion... He now has a panther, too. And he tells me how cute it is. So I figure it's a cub. Uh, Weighs 300 pounds. A panther? Yeah. And he don't have to feed it because he gets a lot of visitors. <laughs> People come to his house. One guy broke in. And he left his fingerprints, including the bones. <laughs> <laughs> the cat It'd ate It'd give them. you a hasty exit, wouldn't it, if you walk yeah. in there's a panther, there's a, there's a garden cat. You know, Teddy Kennedy is now up in Aspen skiing. Yeah. And I don't know why he did that, because evidently they must need him back in Washington, and they got all that snow to lure him back. Two feet in Washington. Yeah. They, now the weather in Washington has, has caught up with what they actually do there. Cold and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now... A lot has been going on. You know, I can't help but make a comment about Billy Carter. Could I? She can comment anything you yeah, want. I mean, I read the paper and I see that he said this about Jews and all. You know, I'm a Jew. I'm a big Jew, you know. Yeah. I'm a very big shot, very important Jew. I didn't know that. Oh, you're kidding. One of the most important. The most important. Oh, sure. So. <laughs> you have your own temple. Huh? One guy said to me the other day, you important Jew. <laughs> 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 Anyway, I, I read where he did a little expletive, you know, and he said whatever it was he's yeah. supposed to have said. You know, I'm not going to... No. I don't want to get it stricken from the record no, here in this right. courtroom. But I see the questions leading up to it. And when a guy drinks a little beer, you know, and he's... You could steam him up into saying anything. See, I mean, I'm not angry with the guy. You have said things, have you not, at times that you maybe wish you had not said later? <laughs> My lawyer wishes I didn't say that. <laughs> I get in a lot of trouble. Sure. I'm interested to find out now what happens with that Lee Marvin thing, because that's terrific. I got a lot of friends that just live with girls and never married them. And they always give me little grums that I've been married 24 years, and they've been having all this nice variety. Mm -hmm. hmm, wait till they have to now pay all these back bills. <laughs> It'll be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. 
I think that's why my friend Lewis got them two cats. He just, when he's finished with a lady, he just tells her pack. And when she's finished packing, he lets the cats into her room. <laughs> and he waits outside till there's no noise. And then he sends the luggage home to her mother. <laughs> did you, uh, did you and Sherry keep, uh, keep house before you were married? No. Now, you can talk about this now. That's Certainly a long time against, ago. 24 years ago. Sure. Now, you never kept house before you were married? No. That wasn't considered we the proper thing to do. We did not have premarital relations. We seldom had post marriage <laughs> And, uh... <laughs> first of all, when I take a shower and shave at night and put on cologne and go to bed... Yeah. After that, who wants to perspire? <laughs> I have found my dreams to be much more exciting than everything I've ever experienced actually <laughs> with any lady friend I met before or since my wife. You meet a wider my variety wife. of people in your dreams, don't you? Oh, and you have a swell time. First of all, you, <laughs> you always come out winner. <laughs> you never have to say, oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, you're always, they are always woman says to you, God, that's magnificent. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> God, God. Dude, giant <laughs> winner, <laughs> winner. And there's not only one, there's always another one waiting. Shouldn't it? Are you kidding? The other one says, not only that, in your dream, they recommend you to other women. Frida, try this, Frida. <laughs> you think Harry is something? Just, just try it. Grab a hold of that. You want to have fun? Your dreams are getting better all the time, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I can't wait to go home. <laughs> <laughs> you find you have these, as you get older, uh, do you find you have more of these uh, sensual uh, type, type No, dreams? now I only get them Thursdays. Thursdays? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and my wife knows when I've had a dream like that because I stay a couple hours longer in the bed in the morning because I'm too tired to get yeah. out of bed. Yeah. Do you ever wake you and ask you why you're smiling? <laughs> in yeah. In a dream, yeah. See, the, you know, I found out the most important thing when I was just a young husband. Don't answer any questions when you're lying down. Sit up, stretch, drink some water, take a couple breaths, then say, what was the question, please? Because <laughs> I'm lying there one day, and she says to me, if you could be in bed with any other woman, would you do it? And I said, why, some have been asking something about me? <laughs> well, that was a problem for my... I never heard the end of that one. Mm -hmm. Then one time... We Would you have you, that, that the, uh, theoretical what? question? Would you have an affair? I mean, if you were alone somewhere... Did you get asked that question? If you were on a desert island... Me? You, yeah, you know... On a desert island? Yeah, they ask you that question. With who? With anybody. I mean, some lady. A girl? Yeah. And you can't see no boat? No boat. <laughs> And Sherry wouldn't know. I don't care if she would know. I'll... Well, I'm hoping she would know. That would mean I finally get off the island. But if I don't see no boat, I say to her, hey, there's no boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I wouldn't even check out the rest of the island. Yeah, just... First of all, I would tell her, in case, say we were on a liner and it sinks, and, <clears throat> and now I don't want to go through all kind of preliminaries and wait until I build a hut and all... None of that. First thing I say to her is like this. I don't know if I ought to tell you this. I'm afraid to tell you. What is it? I have a disease that if I don't have sex every two days at least, I will die. <laughs> and the next thing I will say is, ha 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 ha. You think you'll buy that now, huh? Why not? Most women only need an excuse anyway. Oh. If you give them a good... Oh, oh. What? You see? Women say it's not what? all that easy. What do you mean? That's volunteers. <laughs> Those are the girls in your dreams. You know... No, you know, it took many years before people found out that women are having a swell time, too. They really... And a lot of times I hear nowadays that they started. 
especially at the bar in Las Vegas. It's been known to happen. Yeah, ladies will say to you, you want to have some fun? <laughs> <laughs> and they have a Scrabble set. <laughs> Made out of old panties. You've been married 25 years? 24. 24. It'll be 24 June the 12th. I'll be married 24 years. That's a long time. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's right. And in that time, divorce has never been mentioned. Murder every day. But divorce? <laughs> Harry Hirschfield told me that many yeah. years ago. Have you ever lived, have you ever got to have a fight where you've moved out for no. any length of time? No. Do you want to hear a great story? Sure. One time we have an a fight, and I don't know what it's about because I never know what it's about. <laughs> See, that's before I got to do the new movement where I get up in the morning and I say to her, I'm sorry. And this way I'm covered for the day. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Yeah, because she, who knows what she's thinking, you know? Huh? <laughs> One time we have this big thing and she says, I'm leaving which she has said a lot of times and then starts the pleading and wailing and cajoling and beating of the breast. And finally, I was talking to Stane, but I was kind of tired. And I said, look, you always say you're gonna go, so I'm not gonna fight with you no more, go ahead. She looked at me. See, I wasn't playing the game right. Uh -huh. So she says to me, no, this is my house, you go. I say, okay. So I go in the little dressing room, I take a black suit, two white shirts, a tie, and I might pick up a job somewhere, so I gotta be prepared. And toothpaste and pills for gout. And I got like this, like I was years ago when I used to go to Hanson's drugstore and hang out in New York waiting for a club date in the Catskills. And I'm walking out, there was a little atrium in the yard, and she's out on the little balcony, she says, where are you going? I said, Seattle. <laughs> she says, come back upstairs. I said, all right. I come back upstairs. I mean, it was two o'clock in the morning. Where am I gonna go? If I check into the Hilton is down the street and the Beverly Hills on the other street, if I check into one of them, the desk clerk on the morning, I got two in the morning, checked in, gotcha. And the next day it's in the paper, one yeah. of them, you know? So she says, are you sorry? I said, oh yeah, I'm terrible sorry. Which lucky she don't ask me about what, cause I don't know what. <laughs> you know, it's bad enough we have a fight. I don't have to listen what it's about. <laughs> so now I get in the bed. And she's like this. Why were you going to Seattle? <laughs> I said, of course, I have never been there. <laughs> she turned, let's just leave it. I said, she was so steamed. She thought I'm going to tell her maybe I once met a girl who lives in Seattle. I'm going to go, I didn't know. I'd never been there. I wanted to see it. Well, that's fine. But you don't have fights often enough. No, now we don't have none anymore. Now that she's, she, she, she has a way to channel her energy. She has a business. She's a very good interior designer. Yeah, she's and doing well. Good. And she do, does four, five, eight jobs at once. And she always asks me, do you think I ought to do this job? I always say yes. I wanted to have plenty to do. <laughs> now, there's one fight coming up, which I don't know how to avoid. Did you know this coming? Oh, yeah. You want to, want to mention what it might be? Sure, when she sees me saying this tonight when I go this home. Is... <laughs> We you tell her that's show business? Uh, show You'll business. give me a show business, ba-boom! We'll be right back. Sally Field is here, Tony Delia, and you'll be great. I have not met this next gal, although I have, uh, I have admired her performances and her talent for some time. She's, uh, Sally starred in three different television series, uh, Gidget, The Flying Nun, The Girl with Something Extra. She won an Emmy Award for an outstanding performance that she did in a... a a show called Sybil, and she is currently starring in Norma Ray, which is a film which uh, apparently is a, her most demanding role to date. It's, it's a pleasure to have her here. Would you welcome Miss Sally Field? Thank you. You're here on a crazy night. Yes, I can see that. And this is absolutely silly. Bizarre. Bizarre. Yes. That's, how well, that's are you? Good. I'm fine. How have you been? Just fine. How have you been? I've been fine. Good. That's good. How's camp been? Some we sound like two kids camp, at camp, camp, don't we? Camp was good. Camp did you, was did real you go good. to camp as a, as a No, as a I kid? never went to camp. I feel very left out. Yeah. I've always been left out. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. I don't know why. I've always been a sheep in search of flock. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I, I was kicked out a lot, actually. We had clubs and 
in high school and junior high school, why clubs? Well, and if you don't get in, you're Yeah, well, I was the size. littlest one. For some reason, I, I would be in for a while. You're smaller than I thought you were. I don't know why. When you walked around, you yeah, were... Yeah, and I have, you know... Yeah. I'm very small. Oh. No, no, that was for my shoes, not my legs. Yeah. Did something show when I did that? Oh, my God. Well, the crowd are a little animalistic tonight. Yes, they... So. they... So were you, were anyway, you asked they, they to join to, the club? Yeah, I, I was in the clubs with all the best girls, but I was the one that they liked to kick out for some reason. They would, they would choose one time. I mean, this has nothing to do with any of the notes, but yeah. one time, now, I, I never thought girls were this bizarre, but I, I understand now what, what, you know, how girls can go different ways. I mean, they don't necessarily always like boys, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, I didn't at the time. I mean, they kind of, I think some of them liked me in a way that they weren't aware of. Well, you mean it was you know, an, an uncomfortable relationship? Well, I might have gotten into it now. I mean, it might have been a good time. I mean, I understand that kind of stuff. What they did was, first they dressed me up like a clown. And this the old a slumber, clown trick. Yes, this is a slumber party. Yeah. They dressed me up like a clown and put the whole thing on and the face on, and then they threw me outside and locked the door, and there was no place to go because they were all the, the guys around. You couldn't go to their houses and say, could I use your phone? I mean, you looked yeah. like a fool. Then they brought me in. They took all my clothes off of me and put chunky peanut butter all over my body. And then they threw me in the pool. We're, we're getting to Hackett's dreams again. <laughs> uh, I mean, with a with chunky peanut butter. Yes, it was, it was very strange. You, you have bizarre dreams since we were talking about dreams. That, dreams are intriguing because they say it's all locked into the subconscious and these things stream out and you can go back to childhood and remember names when you wake up that you would not have remembered while you're conscious. You have those kind of bizarre dreams um, where you fly... Oh, no, I did that in real life. Well, that's right, of course. Yes, it was called The Flying Nun. I yes, did that I know for that. years, yeah. so I tried to avoid dreaming about it after that. It was, yeah. it was tough. Doing The Flying Nun was, was hard. I, I had a... Um, the guy who flew me, as it were... <laughs> you tell him what that means. <laughs> I with, mean... With a wire. Uh, the, there were a crane operator man. You know, we had a big crane with an arm on it with wires, and uh, there was a certain man who was responsible for flying me, which sounds rather strange. And he had a, a problem, a small problem, but he was an alcoholic. <laughs> and, uh, oh, hello, he's up there. <laughs> As a result, he used to land me in a lot of bizarre places. Yeah. On, on fire hydrants or it's, uh, in the ocean, you know, out in the middle the right, of it. Not the right guy for that kind of No, no, and there. I'd be like, like uh, 70 feet in the air and he'd run me about 50 miles an hour into a wall. <laughs> and it's... It was real hard to come out of that feeling good about yourself. <laughs> that shakes you a little bit. Destroys your confidence. You know, I, I don't want to ask you a question that sounds like a fan magazine type of stuff, but you, you are mentioned in the, you know, the photo play and all the fan magazines all the time as yes. being, uh, I want to choose the right word here, girlfriend or chum of, of, of Bert, Bert Reynolds, right? Yes, that's and, right. Uh, when, I, when I was going with my wife, they, they referred to us as, as my gal pal. Which I thought was kind of a dumb thing. I didn't exactly know what they were trying to say. Gal pal. Gal pal. Yes. How would you describe your relationship with Bert? Um, um, uh, lovers. Oh, lovers. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, see, I didn't want to come out and I, say something like that yeah. because I really didn't. Because yeah, I it's, think it's, it's hard to say that to me. I mean, I have a. You, you know, do. Have you have that little kind of. Sweet kind of. Probably, look. You know, you look like you'd have two pom poms. We're lovers. Like, hey, let's face are it. Are you really? <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I hope my grandmother's not watching. Was well, she pretty old-fashioned? Would she... Oh, yeah. Uh, my grandmother's, uh, my grandmother Joy. Hi, Joy. She's, uh, she's real old-fashioned. She has, uh, uh, she's 112. I mean, you've got to be old-fashioned when you're 112. Yes. And, um... Would she, she be disenchanted and unhappy if, if she heard you say that you were... I think all of a sudden her hearing aid would go off. See, that's something that even 10, 12 years ago, if somebody said that on this show... Everybody would be very shocked. I don't say, know. Oh, maybe people are shocked. Maybe I've just lost. I don't a think lot so. Of people out there. I don't think so. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, is it? I, I don't think so. I, I don't need dreams. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I got the real thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Sally. I do want to. I do want to mention the. Uh, the movie, Norma Ray, because usually what happens, people come on, we start talking, we have a wonderful time, you, you finish the show, and then the, the picture people come and say, how oh, come you never mentioned yeah. the... Then they you shot this in Opelika? Things. Is that, is that Opelika, Alabama. Opelika, Alabama. Yeah. 
Only and, uh, Oak Lake would have a name. Like yes. <laughs> it's a wonderful town, actually. I loved it. Uh, but you haven't seen the film. Which, no, not yet. Yeah, it's, it's hard to talk about. You know, it's hard to come. I hate those people that come out and say, God, I've done this movie. You well, should see it. Like and then you run down what it's about. It sounds so boring. It's now, like trying to talk like a book. You can't do yeah, it. Yeah, you can't. I mean, if I said to you, if I said to you, Norma Ray is about a... Uh, uh, a contemporary southern woman working in a textile mill with two children, one illegitimate, who organizes a union in the textile mill right. with the help of a Jewish union worker that comes in. I mean, what does that, what does that sound like to you? It sounds like a girl who works in a textile mill with one child, illegitimate, yes. and a Jewish union organizer comes in. I mean, would you go and see that? I don't know. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. It's hard to do that. Yeah. What happened? I mean... It, well, it's a very triumphant film. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like Frank Capra in that way that the people are good and everything yeah. has that kind of joyous feeling in the end and she, and she wins. But it's really, it's kind of like a character study and you can't, and it's hard to sit down and say, well, I'm, I'm absolutely wonderful in this film, you're going to love me. Um, everybody's jumping around about it. It's really scary for That's me. I good. feel like I'm out trick-or-treating and I've got all Hershey bars, you know? <laughs> we've, we've got a short clip now. Yeah, of course, this is, a... it's always difficult to, to give any kind of an yeah, indication it, of a picture with a small uh, piece of film. It's very difficult. It, Ron Liebman plays the Jewish union organizer who comes to his very small town in the South, and she literally has the scene where she says, are you a Jew? Right. I mean, just never met a Jewish person. And um, they, in the context of the film, they become friends, and they remain friends throughout the film, which is very unusual. And they work together, and, and he helps her grow up, and she helps him come to grips with what life is really about. Okay. And this is just kind of a scene Watch of the monitor, and working. we'll show you a small scene here. From Dharma Ray. Yes. You know what? There used to be this whole farm that lived around here. With a baby gun. Oh. I sure hope he's moved away. Yeah, me too. What the hell is that? Get out. Something's looking around my face. Those are minnows. Those are what? Minnows. They won't hurt you. You better not. You sure are a fish out of water down here. <laughs> this is not exactly my native habitat. <laughs> Lubin, <sighs> what would you be doing? A day like this at home? Uh, play some handball at the Y. Go see I eat at the Met. Eat Chinese. Play a little poker. Hit the sack. I've been two places in my life. I've been to Henleyville. I've been on down to Piston. Oh, you'd love New York. You would. Wow. Super town. Most beautiful women in the world. Best food. Opera, theater, ballet. Reuben. Come on. You're homesick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not even going to ask you. I'll be No, don't ask me. No, I'm not going to ask the obvious I'm question that everybody would know. What Let me is. ask her. It's just a swimming scene. What? Were, you swimming both, scene. were you supposed to be naked in the water? Yeah, but we weren't. Okay. Is that when you found out he was Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> just say no comment. All right, just... No comment. You're always okay. safe with no comment. No comment is good. We'll, we'll take a short intermission and we'll be right back. <laughs> we're talking with Buddy Hackett and Sally Field. You know, I've mentioned you that during the break that we had never met before. No, we never and, have. Uh, it was my first time. Because you apparently do not go out much. Unlike the girl when you're in Burt's movie, you always seem to be exuberant, outgoing, and so forth. And I get the feeling that in... Uh... I'm outgoing, but I do it at home. Yeah. In other words, you're an extrovert, but you're only an extrovert at home, where right, you feel comfortable. Right, right. I, I hermitize myself. As a matter of fact, um, I, I was coming to see you for the first time. And, yeah. Uh, and I... I know that you and Bert are very, very close, so yeah, uh, we I are. talked to him and I said, help me. I mean, I want to be just wonderful. I want Johnny just to love me to death and just say, come always to this show. So he said, okay, I'll help you out. I mean, we're close and I'll give you a list of little do's and don'ts, so. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> this is called um, Tips on Johnny. Now, he actually is 
Yeah. Can I help he you? He knows you very well. Okay. And you guys work really, really well together. Yeah, we get a little crazed together. A little crazed. So we have, I have uh, three basic rules here. He's kind of kept it short. All right. The first one is, is that I, I, I should give you no compliments. No. Because you're, you're shy and you, it, uh, it makes you uncomfortable. And uh, so mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not really to tell you that I adore you. Or that oh. I think you're a genius, for instance. No, you're not supposed to say that. No, no, I can't say that because it makes you feel uncomfortable. That's, or, that's true. Or that uh, you're... Of course, a certain amount of discomfort sometimes is uh, <laughs> but, good for one. Uh, but yeah. I know that's true. I am basically, yeah. Uh, basically, I feel shy, uncomfortable. And, uh, I shouldn't say that you're... I've always thought you're probably the sexiest man to ever set foot on the old tube. Well, I don't think you have to go that far. <laughs> See, you no, know, no, you are embarrassing. You see, you, now you that's see, crawling. It embarrasses you and yeah. it goes a little too far. And I, and I certainly shouldn't tell you that I grew up watching you. No, it, no, no, no. I should no. say that. Or, that's that's or, not funny. Especially not that you were you were my treat. If I was a good girl, <laughs> I got to stay up and watch Isn't you. Isn't that you cute? Know what I mean? <laughs> I, I Isn't she adorable? Yes. <laughs> he told me don't say any of that. <laughs> yeah. So I won't. I okay. just I won't say any of that. I will. Now you don't see him if you're a bad girl because you're busy. All of those things. Next, he said. Right. He, he said in this, though, there, there are some positive things. He, like, he, he said, what you like is for women to come out and be aggressive. I mean, he not did. physically. I mean, verbally. Well, you know? I think it's nice for women, you know, if they just don't sit sometimes. They get a little, you know, yeah. they, they say something. Well, he yeah. said it would be good if I could come out and give you a little shot. Yeah. You know? And you, could, you like to work off of that. A couple of good, solid shots. Oh. And, and I said, well, that's not really my personality. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm like what I see. I'm cute and sweet. And I, yeah. I, I, you know, he said, well, think real hard, you know, and find something about Johnny you don't like. Right. So, I mean, Johnny, I thought for days, right. I mean, three days, what do I like least? I mean, I don't want to use hate. I mean, that's a strong word, you know? Yeah. Hate is real strong. So I thought and thought and thought. I mean, what do I feel? I, I, I guess I would just have to say, I hate your suits. <laughs> I mean, I, it's that I don't like plaids and, and stripes. Well, I mean, I hate them. This is a little stripe, but this is not any yeah. plaids or anything. Tonight. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I hate it. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, I thought you'd like me to come out and give you that shot. Yeah, that's, that's real nice. <laughs> I mean, Bert, he, he told me that's... Bert helped you out with it. Bert helped me out. He, he's, Good old Bert. He's always helping me out. Uh-huh. Um, and, and lastly, he told me that of course, I know it to be true. You are the king of physical comedy. I mean, there isn't anybody. I couldn't, I mean, I, should, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. That is a compliment. <laughs> but I know you and Bert, I mean, when you guys get out here, you go a little crackers. Yes, we have. And you have such a good time. But I, being this short, I mean, cute little woman. Pixie. We, yeah, Pixie. And, and you would feel uncomfortable being this gentleman that you are doing any of that physical kind of fun shtick stuff with yeah. me. You know, it, it just wouldn't work out. But <laughs> now I feel that what what you're the really I mean you like to work off of this kind of stuff. I mean, you're pleased when you get to get your teeth into some physical shtick. Now, I know that, that it isn't fair because I'm this little short woman and, and right. you can't really, it can't be fulfilled because you can't come back at me with anything wonderful. Um, like, for instance, if I went... I'm short, I'm cute, and I'm all of that. I mean, I could, I, 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 I could, I could come over here and I could. What is going on with this? Oh, I'm sorry. I could do that, you know. And, and I mean, there's no way. That you could actually, you know, I mean, we couldn't really get into it. You know what I mean? What'd you say? I mean, it's difficult. 
You're crazy. I'm trying to be so sweet to you. Yeah, I I know. Bert told you that that this would be cute. He said you would love even if I went, you know. Uh, let, me, let me explain something. Uh, yeah. Bert, Bert may have misinformed you. I think so, because I, uh... Right, Bert. How could you pick on a sensitive girl? What? You're mad. You and Bert must have some exciting evening at home. Not quite this exciting. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Uh, we're going to be back in a moment, I think. Don't go away. <laughs> I'll say one thing. You, uh, you, you take as good as oh, you give as good as you take. I'm glad it wasn't menthol. Oh. Woo! Don't we... <laughs> Whoopee. My next guest is a... Um, you need a Q-tip. Yeah, I've got to get cleaned up here. Is a, is a remarkable gentleman. Uh, still going strong. World famous for his ragtime music. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a show based on his life and his works called Yubi, which is on uh, Broadway. And it opens here the 25th of September at the Huntington Hartford Theater. He's got an album out. This is an album from the show called Yubi. And what more can I tell you? Here's the grand gentleman, U.B. Blake, right over here. Come on over and join How are you? How are you? Are you? you? U.B. Blake. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Six, seven, eight. We're back, and we're talking with U.B. Blake. Oh, boy, that's a great band. Yeah, aren't they That's wonderful? a band and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I was... <laughs> a band and a half. You know, as I said before, I don't know if you heard in the early part of the show, the Grammy Awards, you were one of the people there who had... It was like you were a kid, almost. You were up on the stage, and you finally... You, you walked out. They did a salute to the, the Broadway show, U.B., mm-hmm. and you came on and says... I've never had so much fun in my life. And you broke up the place. And it... I was enjoying myself. Yeah, I really look like you're having a good time. Yeah. Uh, what's the father's name? Johnny? John Denver? Well, all that, <coughs> all that talking he did, I was supposed to do that. Yeah? But I had four days to learn it. Right? Oh. I'm an ad lib talker. I don't talk. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of, lot of lines to learn. You yeah. can't write no parts for me. Yeah. Was that? Uh, because I like to say, like to say anything that's wrong. Yeah. Well, that's okay. When you're your age, you can say anything yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> Was that your? Fr- now you'd been to the Grammys before, hadn't you? Oh yeah. I come there winning it once. Yeah. But this, please don't laugh. I'm telling you the truth. We are running nose and nose. Some fella, I can't think of his name now. So they gave it to the guy that died. See. So I didn't get it. What? <laughs> what? What year was that? Do you remember? Oh, it's been about four or five years ago. Yeah? Yeah. When the Grammy first came out. Well, wouldn't you rather have lost, though, on the basis that they gave it? Well, I did. I, yeah, if you had I your would, choice. I would have liked to have won it. Yeah. But the guy was dead. Why take the advantage of the dead? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> When's your birthday is uh, this month? Yeah. Yeah, February 1. Seven days, February. I'm uh, 96 years old. Now. 96. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you were born where now again? I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, 1883. 
And uh, the house that I was born in, two rooms downstairs, two rooms upstairs. Hulls Lane and Forest Street, that's where I was born. Yeah. But I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. Then we moved in another house, and my father got this house, $3 a week. See? Three bucks a week. Yeah. Whew. You know, I used to have to p pass two white schools to get to my school. And in those days, that was uh, kind of treacherous, I suppose. Yeah, huh? so they, the big boys taught me how to hit. I, I could hit, see? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, coming down, you know, my nickname is Mouse. Don't call me Mouse now. That's my nickname my was nickname. Mouse. I could hear good then. Yeah. Uh, it's that, here comes Mouse, let's hit my the white boys. So they told me, said, now, when somebody's going to hit you, you back back like you're afraid. And then right in the stomach, my, my wife don't like for me to tell yeah. me. But you asked me and I got to tell you. Right. Because you pain him. That's right, I'm paying right. you. Yeah. <laughs> You always answer the man who pays. <laughs> always, always do what the man pays. <laughs> so you haul back and right so into I the... I haul him right to the stomach, but it's three of them. Yeah. Wham! Down he went. So I foot him, you know. Yeah. That, that will really bring a fellow up short, a quick... Now, but there was three. They killed me. <laughs> Both eyes back. Uh. Nose all bleeding. So my father come home at six o'clock. I'll usually meet him. But I don't go out to meet him because I'm in trouble. He came in. Hi, my mother's name. Hi, I am. Hi, uh, What's the matter with him? He fights all at night. I was born and raised in the ghetto. If you don't fight, I wouldn't have been here to tell you the story. Right. You have to fight to survive. To, to live. See? Yeah. He said, I said, what's the matter with him? I said, Papa. I don't care what you say. I don't like no white people. And he said, what did you say? I said, I don't care. But look at my face. He says, all boys fight. Why they got nothing to do with it? I said, but look at my face. He said, listen. Don't you ever say that. He said, the house we live in. I go to the white people to work and bring the money home to feed my family. Says that man could have said, I don't want any Negroes to live in my house. Right. All right. And then he says, You see this ground the house is on? Yeah. Lord Baltimore gave us that, gave it that to, to, the, to the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. He could have said, I don't want any Negroes to live in. Right. Then, he, then a white man was passing down on the next cross the street. Say, See that man? I said, Yes, sir. You like him? I said, no. No, first he says, uh, what race do you belong to? I said, white race. You like him? I said, no. Why? I said, because he's white. He says, I just told you about that. <laughs> and he says, that man might become the greatest friend you've got. And I don't want you to say that you don't like people because the color's different. And here's my hand to God. Your color don't mean a thing. <laughs> you mean, you're I, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. No, that. you didn't. I'll tell you that. Your dad. Your dad was a smart man and ahead of his time. He was a slick old man. Yeah. See, my mother, not for, for prejudice, I should be the most prejudiced person that I know. My mother and father were slaves. Mm -hmm. Mother and father. But I was taught not to hold in the mind. Now, I want to tell you about the airplane. Want me to tell you? Yeah. We got time? How much time we have? Got time? Yeah. Half a minute. Half a minute. Can't do it in half a minute. <laughs> okay, we'll take a break then. We'll come right back. have time to uh, say goodnight. Are you going to go see UB again when it opens out here at the 25th? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll go to be out September the 25th. 25th, Is that right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, September. Please come to see me, will you? <laughs> it's a wonderful show. Uh, I was going to say goodnight to Buddy, but you noticed when Sally showed up with the shaving cream, Buddy has split and has not been seen since. <laughs> he, he saw the stuff coming and he left, so he said to say goodnight. Gee. 
Well, it's certainly nice to meet you, Sally, for the first time. I want you to have this. Ah, a little Q-tip for the ear? Yeah. And tell that turkey you, uh, you live with that he's right. You're crazy, too. Uh, that was fun. Thanks for coming. You're, oh, you're a good you. sport. But so are you. Uh, what? Uh, tomorrow night, Bert Convy's going to be here, David Steinberg, Mary Lou Henner, and Barbara Hauer. Thank you. Have a nice... I'm humbled by that applause.